Hey, hi, this is uh, Nicholas Forrest from Art Info Australia, and I'm here with Klaus Biesenbach and Hans Ulrich Obrist to talk about 13 Rooms, which is just uh, opening here in Sydney. Uh, so, perhaps if I could just uh, get a brief uh, explanation of, of exactly what, uh, what 13 Rooms is. 13 Rooms is a sequence of 13 rooms, galleries. Each room has a door. Each room has vaguely the same same size, and we always say 13 rooms is like a conventional sculpture gallery. So the visitor will come, encounter 13 different rooms, and in each room is a sculpture. The sculpture is always one or more li living human persons, and should not be the artist him or herself. That's actually the rule of the game. The works are there from you know 10 in the morning to 7 p.m. So during opening hours, um, and uh, then it's you know a classic sculpture exhibition. Always give them charge would have called it living sculpture exhibition. However, then at uh, seven o'clock, the sculptures go home you know, the room is empty. So it's a purely intersubjective situation. It's what happens between the actors, and, you know, uh, the protagonists, and of course the, the visitors. And um, uh, it's about what happens in between, and it's about the presence. The idea is also that these pieces can then, I mean, they're here not only at a specific time, but they're here, you know, every day for 11 days. And then the exhibition will continue, and next year it will be 15 rooms. Um, so the idea is really that it's an exhibition, you know, which happens over a long time. Right. So the, it's uh, started in Manchester and then Germany. So with 13 rooms, you've got the addition of Clark Beaumont, uh, the Australian Australian artist. How did you uh, did you find Clark Beaumont? What what attracted you to to their work? It's got to do with uh, a research which uh, Simon Castells and I started, 89 Plus, which is mapping a generation of artists born after 89. So artists who, you know, grew up with the internet, the first digital native generation. And as Ryan Tricartin, at the moment, he did the big show with Klaus at more PS1, actually said in the New York Times, he said, you know, artists born in the 90s, uh, such an amazing generation is about to emerge. And Simon and I wanted to find out what that generation does. And as part of that research, Simon... Uh, found um, uh, in Australia Clark Boma and told us about it and Klaus and I thought it would be wonderful as the exhibition includes you know, many different generations from John Balesari uh, to very young artists that it could be great to have here the youngest artists from Australia and for the first time show Clark Boma in the context of an international show. Okay, fantastic. Um, so when was uh, the subject of bringing 13 Rooms to Australia, uh, when did you first discuss that with, uh, with John Caldor? When we had uh, 11 Rooms in Manchester. 11 Rooms Manchester was a co-production with the Ruhrfestspiele in the Ruhrgebiet, Essen. And Manchester and Essen are not exactly Tokyo or Los Angeles or London. They are cities that deal with these large-scale production festivals and they deal actually very well with the fact that they have these festivals and you come to the festival, it's really like a retreat because all the artists are together with the critics, with the curators. Going to Manchester is really going to an artistic summer camp. It's always so amazing just the uh, people who are there. If you would do that in London, you would lose everybody because everybody is doing their own work. So Essen, Manchester was very much a summer festival. Uh, which is the ideal, I think, hatching place for very experimental work, very, very experimental work that Alex Putz actually is very good at as a catalyst nearly uh, bringing, bringing into the light. And then we realized that actually 13 Rooms is a compatible idea with museum logic because one of the artists in the show, Tino Segal, was very clear about the fact that it's not about an event, but it should be about the duration of a regular exhibition. So as we say, it's, it's like a sculpture exhibition. It also follows the opening hours of a regular museum. Shouldn't be too short, can be as long as a festival. And of course, we understand having, here we have more than 140 re-performers. So for the organizers, that's quite a costly, in terms of money, but also in terms of preparing, preparation, and guidance it's quite it's quite an intensive project uh, to produce so i think 11 days which is here is already quite a long time to keep 13 rooms alive as klaus said uh, the manchester context is a laboratory for you know time-based work for 
new formats of exhibition. Everything is new. In the festival, it's a, you know an idea which hopefully other cities could be inspired by. That actually, you know, Manchester asked yes. the great Peter Saville um, uh, to, to come up with uh, this idea of a festival, which based in music would then go into the other disciplines and. Uh, uh, through that process, uh, uh, wonderful Alex Poots was actually, uh, uh, you know, hired as the director and has ever since created this extraordinary platform. And we started in 2007 with uh, Tempo de Postino, Postman Time, which is an, an opera Philippe Arena and I co-curated, which basically created, uh, um, the artists were given time and not space in that exhibition. It was an artist opera, then a year later was Marina Abramovic, who did long duration and kind of Performative work and took over the entire uh, Witwatersrand Gallery, and then la two years ago, um, in 2011, uh, Klaus and I co-curated the uh, uh, the 11 rooms. The exhibition here in Sydney is very, very different. We are incredibly excited about what the architects did, what Seidler Architects, Penelope Seidler and her team did by actually building in these uh, 11 rooms with white and black architectural elements. Even the backstage zone is designed very beautifully uh, and it really is a completely new experience here because obviously the exhibition uh, has here its own autonomy. It's no longer embedded in you know, other things but it has its own autonomy in this gorgeous historic building. Mm. Yeah, my apology, I just quickly left You're okay. my chair. <laughs> but no I, problem. I actually felt it's a bit of a 13 room phenomenon. Absolutely, yesterday, but our own performance. And yesterday <laughs> we were going through the rooms uh, and some of them must have been just like talking to one of the other performers and one of the performance rooms was empty. And I think that's also quite a good experience in a way. When you spend time with 13 rooms, it's really important that you let it rest a bit. It's not... We observed yesterday there was a sponsorship dinner with a viewing, and I think people really, it's 13, you can easily count it. It's a little bit like, oh, I have done all 13. And once you have done all 13, I think you should start again, because they're always different. And so, <laughs> yeah, Yeah, I think that's an important important aspect actually. Okay, and there are some other um, aspects uh, to this particular edition of the of uh, the project that were unique for Australia and um, so one of those was one of the, the choreograph the choreography for one of the rooms. Is that was the Alora and uh and Kelsa Dio, is that correct? Absolutely the choreography but I mean there are so many participants here from Australia and that's something we believe we believe is very, very important for when exhibitions tour because when an exhibition goes from one place to the next, it's kind of, uh, it would just be packaging to do the same show again. It sort of learns from a local context. And the exhibition here learns in many different ways from the local context in Sydney. As we mentioned, Clark Beaumont have been added to the artist list. The architects, uh, Seidler, have developed this um, you know, uh, whole exhibition. It's a display feature, really, a black and white display feature uh, for the show. The choreographer, um, uh, of Adora Calzadilla is one of, of many, many protagonists. There are 140 protagonists actually uh, from Australia who all are interpreting, choreographing with the artists, you know, uh, acting, you know, in these pieces. So it's a very big collaboratorium. And then also, uh, it's for the first time that the book was uh, was published. And there again, we wanted to, you know, learn from the local context and the the great uh, David Malouf, uh, one of the greatest writers. Uh, uh, in the world, and Australia's you know greatest novelist and poet has actually uh, written uh, an incredibly insightful text where he he really connects also eleven rooms to the to to moments in previous art history where time-based art was important. He talks about the Baroque moment um, and uh, the question of presence. He this morning wrote this wonderful sentence: "Everything depends on attention's absolute presence," which is a David Malouf sentence, and that I think very much. You know, summarizes many of the thoughts. You have Nico Papasagaris, who uh, also uh, wrote the text from a very, very different angle, talking about many of the artists uh, in the show, but from a perspective here. So the idea is really that in many different ways, you know, we believe that when we do these exhibitions, that they learn, we learn from a local context, and then we're going to go to the next city and carry that, you know, uh, knowledge and learn again. So it's a permanent learning process. It's not imposing a show; it's learning. Mm. So we've got Clark Beaumont uh, in uh, in this edition, and um, obviously they're they're going to be going to any future editions. What what do you think they're going to um, they're going to bring to uh, to the other ex to the f future editions? Um, so I suppose the question is, um, 
what is it about Clark Beaumont that uh, that is uh, going to that's going to add to I the exhibition? I think what's going to add is always the accessibility that it's not a completely alien satellite that's landing in Sydney. The two young artists from Australia who have come up with a beautiful variation of one of the rooms, and I think an exhibition like 13 Rooms, when you have John Baldessari or Marina Abramovic or uh, Santiago Sierra in the show, might look like there's a group of very established artists, but it's actually it's actually really like a, a Russian doll, like a matryoshka, because you have you have these 13 artists, but one out of these 13 artists, Clark Beaumont is a loophole where a younger artist sees that this is actually an option as a work. This is an option to work as an instruction piece, to think about this and not necessarily have to come up with a painting or a sculpture to make it big in the art market. Then, of course, there's a whole other layer of creativity and incredible talent in the show, with which all the re-performers when we did Marina Abramovic, the retrospective of MoMA, we had over 40, we had over 40 re-performers that were um, basically hired by MoMA for three months, for actually longer, five months, because we had to train and and set up the exhibition. Sorry, this is crazy. I don't yeah. know how to switch that off. <laughs> um, and so. For example, going to Documenta last year, where Tino Segal had a great performance piece, and then at the Documenta party, like three of the re-performers came up to me and said, oh, don't you remember us? We were performing in the Marina Abramovich exhibition, which is quite wonderful. So I think here is also a whole uh, generation of, of young performers and dancers and actors who gain a certain experience out of 13 Rooms. It's also, in this sense, really a situation of encounter because it's it's it triggers many encounters it tri triggers encounters between the you know the actors the, the performers and and the visitors it obviously also um, triggers a lot of encounters between the different actors who keep meeting here for 11 days and that's something you know as Klaus said which happens so much for example in Tino Segal's bigger pieces which literally constitute the community um, and uh, uh, almost like you know a mini new Black Mountain College of some sort. And uh, I mean, one thing maybe also to mention is that the research is local, but the research also, and that's the I think wonderful thing if one can work um, on things for a long time by doing these shows over many years. Uh, it's actually a slow process. We do it only once a year. You know, we worked on it for two years to prepare it. So all in all, it's already now four years, and you know, we're going to do it for many more years. Within this slowness, that, that it's the local research, but also the global research, which continues. So we keep discovering pieces from previous generations, which actually follow that same protocol. No, uh, so John Baldessari, for example, um, has already in the 70s come up with uh, almost Sisyphus-like room paintings, which where the room gets painted again and again, and he's developed a completely new version here, you know, for Sydney. Um, or if you think at the same time about the work of Damien Hirst, which has not been exhibited so much, but which he developed in the early 90s with the dot paintings, you know, wall paintings and the two, um, the two twins. And Klaus mentioned Marina Abramovic, we can also mention, you know, John Jonas. So both John and Marina have worked on this uh, question, you know, for, for a long time. Decades, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so, and then here in um, Sydney also, uh, and that's something which wasn't the, the case in, um, <laughs> which wasn't the case in, in uh, actually in Manchester, it was the case in Essen, is Xavier Leroy. Uh, uh, Xavier Leroy was also added to the show. And uh, Xavier is, comes actually from the world of choreography. He's one of the great choreographers uh, uh, of our time. Uh, but always with an interest in the world also of museums. And he's been the mentor of Tino Segal. Tino learned a lot of the craft you know, yeah. from Xavier, then developed his inventions within the world of museums, which he's done throughout the 2000s and you know, over the more than last, more last 10 years. Um, however, Xavier has exhibited quite a few times in museums. He resisted that. Uh, uh, and got more and more interested actually in the last two or three years in that. And Klaus and I went to see his show in Barcelona, where in an amazing way Xavier took over the whole Dapis Foundation um, into a kind of a Gesamtkunstwerk of, of, uh, uh, of his art. And uh, uh, it's at that moment that we decided to invite him for uh, 11 rooms and then for 12 rooms. And that's really the thing. So whilst you know, the exhibition tours, we do local research, but we also continue to make research all over the world. And we keep learning, and uh, so it builds up also an archive of these uh, 
of these pieces and you know hopefully in this sense uh, also possibility of an exhibition which could be reinterpreted in many many decades. And I think it's very important we come from the logic of a festival, Manchester International Festival and in the day and age of social media and Instagram and Twitter sometimes festivals are necessary to even bring that level of attention to a certain art form but this is a very, very unique festival because you could also say an art fair is a festival. There's Basel, ba Basel, Miami, Freeze London and Freeze New York, the Armory. It's a festival which is like a trade fair, but this is a festival and you cannot buy anything. And I think that is very important. That's a festival where what you get is a unique experience. So that makes 13 Rooms very unique. Fantastic. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Klaus and, and Hans Ulrich. And, um Thank you very much for your time.